Welcome back. In the first part, I explained what the scope is of this small research study into performance metrics is, and also started to explain the process that I took. So now let's get into some of the results. Okay, so let me just explain some of the base data that I'll be working from. Anything you can see in yellow on the left of the screen is to do with the metrics for the optimization phase. The metrics on the right in blue are those from the warp forward phase. And in the middle here, you can see the parameter values that generated both of those sets of results. And so the process that I took here was slightly different from the process you might take if you were running an actual optimization in that there you would choose the best parameter values for the optimization and then just run the walk forward for those best values. Whereas here, in order to undertake this research, it was necessary for me to do the walk forward phases for all of the parameter values that were also used in the optimization. And I've put both of those sets of results into the same table here so that we can manipulate them together in terms of filtering and sorting and so on. So let me give you a few examples. So here you can see the metrics that were obtained for the modified profit factor, which is the normalized version. The R value or the coefficient of correlation, R squared the CAGR over maximum drawdown and the CAGR over mean drawdown. And these are the metrics that were obtained from the optimization phases for these specific parameter values. And then on the right hand side, we have the equivalent metrics for the walk forward phase. So here you can see that when we run those values, in that out of sample phase, we received this value for the modified profit factor, the R value, R squared value, and so on. And by structuring the data in this way, will allow us to look at how the optimization metrics are predictive of performance in the out of sample phase. And of course, using this data, we can construct a surface to give us a visual representation of how the parameters performed. So let me give you an example of that. The easiest way to do it is to create a pivot table. And so now to visualize the surface, we can simply add in the parameters as the row and column in the pivot table and then simply choose the performance metric that we want to look at. So for example, I could look at CAGR over the maximum drawdown here. And this now gives me a tabular representation of how the performance metric scored each of the parameter values. So we can now simply create a pivot chart of type surface, and we can take a look at that. And so first impressions of this surface is that generally it's of a good quality. What you want to be looking for here is for surfaces that don't have any erratic nature with multiple high points on them. And so it's very clear from this what the best performing parameter values were. There's no ambiguity at all. The only thing I would say is that if I performed this optimization again, I probably wouldn't include these higher values towards the right hand side of the surface because clearly they don't offer any sort of value. OK, so now let's return to our raw data. And so the next thing I wanted to look at was how well the walk forward phases performed based on the best parameter values identified by each of the metrics. So again, if I use compound annual growth rate over the maximum drawdown as the example, this is simply a case of choosing that metric and sorting to get the best performing value, which you can see here. And so the parameter values 
that gave us that performance were 20 for the open signal and 140 for the closed signal. And so from that now in the back tester, I can create a walk forward equity curve for the final two and a half years, which is the out of sample data. And that's something that I've already done and I've got that information available here. So you can see I've got the equity values for CAGR over max drawdown from the 5th, 2018, all the way up to November 2020. And so now by looking at that value on a chart, we can see exactly what those walk forward results look like. So you can see it did very, very well at the beginning of the, of the walk forward phase, but then just started to tail off towards the end. So we can repeat that exercise for each of the metrics that we're looking at to see what the equity curve would have looked like for each of them. And again, I've got those results all ready to go. So let me just talk you through these. So first of all, the, the best parameter values for profit factor were 10 and 180. However, the problem here is that these only generated a relatively small number of trades. And so in terms of statistical significance, these results don't have much. And so when this was the case, I chose the next best set of parameters that did have high number of trades and therefore high statistical significance. And so you can see those here. Now, interestingly, the normalized profit factor came up with the same results and also the same results in terms of statistical significance. CAGR over max drawdown, however, chose different parameters as did CAGR over mean drawdown. And again, different parameter values were determined to be best using the coefficient based metrics. Interestingly, recovery factor came up with the same values as CAGR over max drawdown. And I suppose that isn't too surprising because they are very similar in nature. And we've also got the values down here for the expected payoff and the sharp ratio. Now, because there is some commonality between these metrics, that's why we don't have an individual line for each one. But to give you some idea, we can see here that the blue curve represents the coefficient based metrics, which were based on values of 20 and 200. Then the yellow equity curve is the CAGR over mean drawdown, which was 20 and 120. And so, of course, that's also the same curve for the statistically significant normalized profit factor and the statistically significant profit factor, which both chose those same parameter values. Now, interestingly, the orange curve that you see at the bottom here is based on the values for the parameter values that created non-statistically significant results. And that's why they're quite different to the others. But the important thing here is, can we use these equity charts in order to tell us which performance metric is best? And I don't think we can. Although the comparison of walk forward results is an interesting exercise, and it gives us some indication of how the underlying metrics are operating, those who've seen my previous videos know about my obsession with statistical significance. And looking at the equity curves in this way, just for the highest performing parameter values, is subject to an element of random chance, in addition to the predictive properties. So unfortunately, although interesting, these are not the results we need to focus in on on our study. Instead, we need to look at the relationships between all of the results, not just the best performing ones. And I do this in the next part. So click top left to head there now.